All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back for another video. If you are not subscribed, do that thing, hit the button. If you're already subscribed, you're awesome. Thank you, you're awesome. If I didn't say that, you're awesome. So as you see, this garage is a complete mess because like I, like I stated in the last video, we're starting to clean out the attic up there, taking all the stuff out, the random stuff that we stored up there that we never used from the house that probably should have been thrown out, but whatever. Got a lot of car parts to go through up there, probably just bring a bunch of the scrapyard at some point because I don't even know what to do with them at, at, anymore. I'm not looking to sand fiberglass and foam and make a complete mess since all this stuff that's out is house stuff and I don't want to make a mess out of that. So I think what I might try to do is to try to fiberglass something today because that shouldn't take much sanding, I think. So on the passenger side, I don't remember if we went over this in the video that I made the little custom flare, but I did the passenger side one, which fits differently than the driver's side because there's the bumper seems to be out a little bit more on this side, but it could just be the bumper fitting horribly because everything else seems to line up pretty decently. Everything else looks even. But uh, the other one, I think it's in the car. I think I might try to fiberglass that. Well, before we get into fiberglassing, uh, one of the other, one of the older videos asking for help about this car, about the turn signal situation. I found bulbs to work for. Um, I think that's the part number. This is from PartsGeek.com. Actually, ordered through eBay. If you want to try them, uh, it's the regular halogen bulbs, and they do not work. The blinkers still all blink when you go left or right. So that's not the problem. This also might be one of the last weeks that we're doing like any like real work in this garage because we're moving shortly. The whole house is getting shipped out on the 12th and then the cars are getting shipped out on the 13th. Pretty exciting, a little scary. I might vlog the whole move. So if you're interested in that, let me know down below, hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to not miss it. All right, so let's start talking about this fiberglass. This kit right here, if you would like a fiberglass repair kit for yourself, I'll link it down below. Use that link. Helps me out, helps the channel out. Um, let's show you the main reason I bought this in the first place and then one of the reasons we'll probably be using a lot of this, if not buying some other stage, some other sort of this that has a lot more. Excuse the mess. So this was originally bought mainly for this bumper, which this one should be a pretty easy repair. It's just cracked there. Probably not hard to probably just put it from the inside and then sand this down or whatever i'm not too concerned about this um and then that we're cracking along with this i do have body filler for stuff like this uh, i'm not sure if i'm going to attempt to straighten that with fiberglass Ooh. but since we're cracking along with this body kit i might wind up using it for other stuff to make things look better and then as many of you know and i actually got some mean comments about it we're not using the front fenders for this kit because i hate them personally, at least the way mine fit, look disgusting. And we're going with the custom one. So if you didn't see the video about making the custom fender flares, go check that one out. I'll go link it up there. And now let's look at this fiberglass kit. I, I cut the tape, but I never actually opened it. So we're gonna see this for the first time together. Not that this is like exciting stuff or anything, but um, I'm not sure how much is actually in here. Ooh, this might work. This might work. This is our little fender flare. I guess we'll lay this down like this for now, just to get an idea. So, um, we're gonna learn together, I guess. I mean, unless you already know how to do fiberglass, but we're gonna learn how to do fiberglass together. And I don't know how many layers to do. So I'm thinking two layers to start. I could always order more of these kits to redo it, and I'm gonna have to get I might have to get another one for the other side, but I'm thinking if I do two, one and two, cut this in whatever shape it needs to be cut. Um, it needs to, I guess it needs a little extra slack too. I'll figure that out. We'll cut that. Then hopefully uh, we'll have enough left over for the other side and we'll at least make this cool flare. Now this whole fiberglass thing, doing this one, I'm tackling a small project right now because this is gonna set the mood for the entire body kit install. If this goes, easily or smoothly, mainly just easily. I mean, I could make everything go a little smoother with more attempts, but as long as this goes pretty easy, 
we're going to be doing a lot of fiberglass work. Because let me show you another idea I had. So my goal of junk again. So you see how the car is obviously sitting on the ground and you see how high the fender flare, the fender arch flare, whatever you want to call it, comes up. Pretty high, pretty large gap. Um, that's body metal that needs to get bent up. So don't worry about that. But look at the flare itself. One of my ideas, because this little front piece went so smooth, was to make an add-on piece with some more of this foam. But some of my thoughts would be taking this flare from maybe about here somewhere, trying to keep the arch going and bring it to about here by using this foam. So do my best shape it in here and whatnot and then fiberglass the whole thing together so then we'll actually have a lower body line and we won't have to lower the car to make it look good because that the front right height it's actually pretty damn good we might have to try to add a little camber in the front just to pull the wheels in we're poking but not a crazy amount of poke if we could camber it in and then uh this fender doesn't really need to be rolled but um i feel like we're gonna wind up cutting this here a little bit and whatnot but yeah Battery died, sorry. So obviously, just doing this body kit in the first place is a very large undertaking. We're putting in all the work just to get the body kit mounted. So we might as well take the extra step or two to get it looking up to par. Just look at this. It looks fantastic. Hold on, I'll even close the hood. Get the full. Looks fantastic. I love this look, but um, I have been saying for a long time, this, well, at least to my wife, that I wish we could just run it with the back piece and not so much the front. So that's going to be the plan for now because I think this is going to turn out pretty awesome. So I'm just going to start working here. I'm going to try to figure this out. I don't know, like I've said earlier, I've never done fiberglass before. I don't know how much extra slack to leave myself here. So I guess it would be like that. I mean, I guess you do that. Let me get maybe a marker or something. I, I don't know. Let, let's do this together. So I just saw there, I was just trying to lay this out in the best possible way to get as much leftover as possible, which I'm not sure. I don't think this is gonna be enough for the other side now that I'm looking at it, but this seems to be about right. I could move that up a little bit more. Basically just gonna cut along this line, then I should have two of the same piece. Luckily when I did, uh, well, attempted to do the paint work on my 240, I bought a bunch of like different painting supplies. So I do have these cups, mixing cup, has one, one ounce marked on it. Measure out one ounce of this, see how it looks. If it looks like it might be enough. If not, I'm gonna do two ounces to, I guess, 20 drops of this, which isn't much in here. Let's try it. Just the fiberglass resin stuff smells horrible. So I'm gonna put a um, mask on to mix this. Then we're gonna try it, putting gloves on. Just watch with me, I guess. Okay, so I just decided I'm gonna leave it like that, even though it's not the greatest. Let me just show you quick, and then we're just gonna let it dry. So this is what we're looking at. Um, now that I've started doing it, I realized I've seen in videos before, people have like a little vacuum seal thing to pull everything in towards the piece. Um, we don't really care about that too much because our foam isn't the smoothest in the first place, so we're gonna have to body work it either way. We're more concerned about this edge and kinda right there. Not too concerned right there, because that's gonna be hidden that's going to be the spot that sits right here, so we could fix that up. Um, I have a feeling this is going to be completely horrible to remove from this piece of plywood, particle board, whatever you want to call it. But, I mean, I could probably just grind it right at the edge there. 
Not the end of the world. Anything we sand through, because there's some spots that it's like bubbling up a little bit. Anything I wind up sanding through will be so much easier to patch now that we have the main thing done. And I know you might be thinking, um, does this guy Chris actually know what he's talking about? No, the answer is no. Like I was saying before, the box says about two hours dry time at 75 degrees and it's, a lot, it's about 30 degrees cooler than that. So I'm thinking maybe three, four hours this is gonna take to dry. So it's 2.30 right now. I'm gonna come back out 4.30 just to see how it's going, how it's feeling, and then check in from there. Whew. All right, so it's 7.30. It's been three hours. Let's go check this thing. It still looks wet, but I don't know if it's gonna still be wet. Um, it appears as if the foam started deteriorating, so not gonna be able to use that, reuse that, which I wasn't gonna be able to reuse that anyway. I don't know. I don't know if I even did this right. All right, still a little soft. Not ready yet. So I guess we're just gonna leave this till morning time. We'll check back then. All right, so it's the next day at 10 a.m. So that's what, like 20-ish hours or something like that later. Gotta be completely honest, I don't have too much faith that this is gonna be solid. Looking at it right now, looks the same as it did yesterday. So I mean, I guess that's a plus. It didn't really change shapes. Um, but it did get a lot colder overnight, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Let's see together. Ooh, we're solid. It's a little sticky still. Oh, it's not completely solid as you see there. Oh, sticky stuff. But pretty solid, so uh, yeah. Let's talk quick. So this is what I learned. Since this isn't completely hard yet. That's what she said. <laughs> and I don't want to try to release it from this piece of wood. I'm gonna leave it and we're gonna end the video at this spot. Fiberglassing doesn't seem too hard, but I think you need to do it in the right temperature to get it to actually harden. Like I said, it's been about 20 hours and it's still not completely hard, but it's pretty, it's pretty good, but it's a little, uh, still sticky. It's not supposed to be sticky. So that's one thing. Number two thing that I realized after the fact is I probably should have put tape down Probably should have taped this first before I did this on top. So then I could actually pull the whole piece off because I don't think it's gonna pull off. I'm gonna have to cut it off of the off of the wood. Not the end of the world. Another issue that I realized I should have done. Sorry I couldn't have more in this video for you guys, but this is how things work in real life. And I'm not trying to hide anything from you guys. So fiberglassing doesn't seem too hard, but we're probably gonna wind up waiting to do more fiberglass work um, till after we move, which is only in a couple weeks from now. So we're in a warmer climate and this stuff will actually set. This is not gonna work. One piece every, well, I mean, I would do more than one piece at a time, but like one piece every day and a half or two days is not gonna cut. I decided to leave this whole process in that it's not completely messed up, but like I didn't do it perfectly uh, just to show you guys that this is real life and not everything is perfect all the time. So uh, you could do this yourself. I did consider using a heat gun or whatever just to like, heat it up a little bit, hopefully it would harden, which I might do later if it's not more solidified. I gotta get this video edited to get out later today, so we're not gonna do that together. That might maybe be the next video, I don't know yet, but I wanna thank you guys for joining me. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave some comments down below if you saw if I did anything wrong or a better way to do this, which there's definitely a better way to do this, let me know down below for sure. The only thing I could think of is either the temperature is too cold still to really be doing this, or I didn't mix the hardener and resin enough, or maybe I was supposed to put more hardener because it's colder, I don't know. So let me know down below because I obviously didn't do everything 100% right here, and there is room for improvement, and I would love to know. So let me know down below. Videos every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.